Okay, uh, this is my product evaluation for Rapid and Interactive. Uh, throughout this evaluation, I'm going to look at uh, my planning process, uh, how the testing went, uh, the different forms of feedback I used, and the kind of responses I got, how I adapted to it, um, whether I consider that the product met the client's needs, um, comparing it to a product that I thought um, you know, is what I think I should aspire to you know, make something of similar uh, quality of. Um, whether I consider it to be fit for purpose and what I've learned from it and what I can do in the future. Uh, to start off with planning, my first uh, point was to consider what software to use. Uh, in the past I'd used Encore before and as soon as I heard uh, you know, interactive menu I thought Encore because it's simple, it's you know interactive buttons, it, uh, it's fairly intuitive, I already knew how to use it. But the problem with that was there were limitations in terms of um, movement uh, and functions available. I wanted, you know, I wanted people to be able to click something and it move to have that kind of uh, interactive feel as if you would in real life. Uh, the buttons in Encore are fairly static. Uh, the only option is to have a, a highlight rollover, something like that, rather than an actual like an image change or an animation. Um, also, it's not quite as seamless, so I opted for Flash, which I'd actually skirted in the past. I remember once I used PowerPoint to make an interactive product rather than Flash. Um, which showed how dedicated I was to doing something that I knew was appropriate um, for this interactive product. So I kind of taught myself as I went along, and um, I consider it, you know, I think it was successful uh, applying the skills that I learned. Obviously, there were things that I could have done better. I'll come on to that uh, later. Uh, when I did my research, like there's an image here of some primary research when we went to the Science Museum, I saw a lot of the information was text-based, uh, even though this is, you know, uh, quite a well-designed example, it's still just information. And I thought to myself, well, I'm a, I'm a media student, I'm not really a history student. I want to be able to engage viewers. There's already the information being provided at the museum, so what can I do to get people to think more? Um, I think that, well, obviously the research led me to that because all I saw was that a lot of information. There were a few examples like uh, a, compute, a video game on pain where you could uh, use uh, like different pain medication to fight off bacteria and it kind of taught you about the different strengths according to you know how effective it was when you're playing the game. I thought that was interesting. I had considered um, using something like Game Maker as well to make it, but uh, that would only have run as an executable on PC, so it would have worked on that. Um, again, like I said, from the research led to content, uh, I opted for video, but I wanted to keep it short and simple for people that didn't want to sit there and watch a lot of it. And um, so I decided to break it up into four uh, to let people still get to customise what they're, they're viewing rather than being led through like a linear narrative. Because I had originally considered that, but I wanted, you know, the user's experience to feel somewhat, you know, within their control. So this is my site map, and as I said, there are you know four different videos, and it's a it's a static interface. And something really important about that is it has the appearance, the illusion of being really simple in the way that a user can come to it and look at it, and what they see straight away is what they're going to get. Is they're always going to have this central focal point. There always going to be able to, as soon as they've pressed one button, it's, that button's still going to be there, they know everything's going to be where they last saw it, so they're not going to be searching for ways to navigate the product. Um, they, they already understand you know, how it works. Uh, when it came to testing this, um, having put it all together, uh, there are a couple of
couple of issues I found, uh, such as the video playback. Uh, when I transferred this project folder over to the Mac, I had originally thought that it was a Mac issue, but it was down to file structuring. I didn't know that SWFs, using the external playback, it had to have the video in there. Obviously, it kind of comes in the name because it's external. Uh, so it know, needs to know, you know, what file structure to move through to uh, it, to find it to play it. But I fixed that by going back and relinking them. Uh, there's also a default setting on uh, CS6 Flash where the FLV, FLV playback will take over your screen, it goes full screen. So the intention with the design of my product was that um, the video would be small, it would be fit within the television frame, but when you go on it would play and it would take it over. I fixed that by finding some action scripts. I had to visit some forums, it took almost most of a day to find you know, the solution to that and I think that's uh, an example of you know the risks of using some software that you don't quite understand yet but I think um, the benefits outweigh you know, the negatives. Uh, using cross-platforming on Flash was the, one of the main reasons why I chose it as well is because anything that has Flash Player uh, will be able to run my uh, product. So you could take it straight from PC to Mac and there were no problems. Um, you could embed it onto a website and that would work as well. Uh, I guess technically it may even work on Android phones. If Android phones do they have Flash Player? Recent ones, yeah. I know but like, iPhones do. Uh, but yeah, so anything with Flash Player, and I think that's something really useful I didn't really have to think about that I'd already kind of uh, covered that when I decided to use Flash. Um, the different forms of feedback, uh, I presented this product in kind of a, a rough still image format to the client and uh, all the feedback was positive, they didn't seem to have any glaring issues, they made some suggestions to adding to the content. Uh, which I don't think I've got around to doing. Uh, peer feedback throughout, you know, whilst I was doing beta testing, I'd have people try and get them to have a go and click through it and see how it worked. And I think that really helped because anytime there was an issue, I'd have things like uh, uh, the area that your mouse has to roll over to a button, uh, it might roll over too soon or there might be a gap where you can put your mouse over the button but it's not actually highlighted. Um, and then at the private viewing as well, that was good to see it functioning as a user would be using it on the Macs in the area. Uh, I didn't find any problems with it functioning there other than I would have liked to have a reset to go back to my uh, static home screen because uh, at the moment, once you finish playing a video, it will kind of just cut to black and you won't see that static again unless you right click and click reload. And that's something that now I understand Flash more wouldn't be too difficult to do. So, uh, did I, do I personally think that I met the client's needs with this product? I think I did. Um, some notes I made from when I very first. Uh, met the clients and they said you know what they were looking for is uh, they wanted uh, an emotive exploration of objects from the past. I think this is probably the one that I met the least whilst I did explore uh, a theme within their product, uh, within their exhibit, I didn't choose a specific product, uh, a specific object that they had on display. I wanted to, because I wanted to make it more about people's own interpretations, I wanted to pick uh, a theme because it was more lucid. It was a, it was more of an idea than something that some of you may have not have come across or had a personal experience with. Um, having the ability to make up their own minds and obviously being open to interpretation, a lot of that's in the interface. The fact that people can select, you know, what videos they want to see, what subject they want to listen to about, 
and the use of rhetorical questions within the script. Again, asking people to think about uh, this stuff rather than just telling them information. Uh, simple pleasures against instant gratification. All of my uh, videos have examples of this uh, within the products. I'm constantly comparing the past to the present. Um, things like black and white television to HDTV now and trying to get people to uh, think about the difference. Uh, and promoting intergenerational discussion. Uh, a big thing I did when I very first thought about this product was uh, reminiscence and discovery. So I want the, the older audience to be able to reminisce and think about this stuff that they would have experienced themselves. Uh, and I want the younger generation to be able to discover that. And they can either discover that through what I'm saying, or in greater detail, it could be expanded on by those people that are reminiscing. They could then engage in conversation with the younger people, if it's, say, like a grandparent with like their grandson, um, and learn more. Uh, the design of the interface, there's two aspects of this I want to talk about. First, the, uh, the character, the narrator, which was me in the video. Uh, I wanted to base it on that kind of old black and white BBC, very uh, well-spoken, uh, you know, Queen's English kind of television presenter. And this is a recent example of someone from uh, South Yorkshire Radio, BBC Radio. And I think that kind of looks somewhat similar to how I dress, just not quite. Uh, mine was a bit over the top. Uh, and uh, something that uh, I really inspired me was Life on Mars, uh, this point where Sam Tyler's in a coma and he, he's in back, back in time and uh, a psychologist is speaking to his subconscious but uh, the psychologist is actually inside the TV in a television program dressed like this kind of character trying to talk to Sam you know through the TV but he can't hear him because he's obviously trapped uh, in his coma and I really like the idea of having uh, the narrator that's inside the product, you know, being aware that the person is, uh, the person's watching them and listening to them, because you're being directly engaged, because you're being spoken to, so that you're not just, somebody's not talking about something, you know, they're, they're directly addressing you, which I think makes um, for something a bit more interesting. And it also helped with, you know, the personal interpretation, because I'm asking people to think about things. In terms of layout, um, here, there are some examples here of some really good uh, web design layouts that are similar to this, where you've got this kind of focal point uh, with the video in, inside. And I think uh, it's, it was much more interesting than just having, you know, just putting the video on the screen. I thought it made a nice way to. Um, you know, have the buttons in more naturally as well because they look as if they're part of the um, the, the television set and whilst they're not your average kind of TV buttons uh, they're all things that people can associate with interaction so I think uh, well, for example at the private viewing I, uh, I didn't really see any problems with people uh, like trying to work out how to navigate my product uh, the only thing I found was that some people thought that the highlighted text that were labelling what the buttons were for, they thought they were buttons. Um, I could have either not had the subtle highlight, which made them stand out a bit more, obviously, or I could have um, made them part of the button as well, because that uh, little subtle like, bit behind the text, I could have made that highlight as well, um, if that's the way that users were, you know, tending to drift towards trying to navigate my interface with then I could have just altered it to kind of suit what most users were trying to use. Uh, this product, uh, the Ideator, I really like this, and this could have been made in Flash, I'm not sure, but I definitely know that I could have made this in Flash. 
with uh, a little bit more experience. There's a random element to it. It looks a bit uh, smoother, the animation. Basically, what you can do is you can select uh, a theme like household products or like a band name or something, and you can hit the generate button, and what it will do is it will come out two random words or phrases and combine them. You can then save the ideas, uh, things like that, and that has a kind of customizable aspect to it. And I remember that the client had said that they wanted something that the user might be able to leave behind. And it's a shame that I didn't manage to fit something like that into mine. I know ActionScript uh, 3 definitely has like random elements to it. Uh, I would have liked, I mean, even I could have done like a, just a random pick one of the channels on the TV by random. But I would have liked to have added something similar to this. Um, with that kind of random element and making things change, uh, move a lot smoother rather than just having my buttons having one direction and then a long click, uh, maybe actually rolling or rotating or something like that. Uh, do I think it's fit for purpose as well as meeting the client's uh, expectations? Did it you know, meet mine? Did I? achieve the best I thought I could. Uh, I think I did choose the most appropriate software. Uh, uh, the video content was fast to create and after writing scripts it just had to be filmed in one day, uh, which I think was good because it meant I wasn't relying on trying to fill it with something I could pay a bit more attention to the graphical aspect because I didn't have a lot of experience. I wasn't very artistic so I wanted to uh, try and make the product look you know, graphically pleasing for the user as well as having some content for them. Uh, the product layout, uh, as I said before, it's fairly clear, you know, where the user needs to look because it's a persistent interface, you know, it's static. They're always going to be able to look there and know, you know, where they're navigating to. Uh, connecting this product to, to the space, I, uh, I, the colour the color scheme matches the joint exhibition behind with the kind of the, the creamy yellowy colour and I think Anushka picked up on that and she did say that she liked it. Um, also the colouring made it look that kind of age and I think that was nice. Uh, going back to I reminiscence and discovery, I do think that it meets both, you know, old the older audience and the younger audience. I think either could you know watch this and uh, interact with my product and both understand how it functions and uh, be able to follow you know the content. Uh, and I also con considered additional needs through subtitles. I don't have anything uh, for if a user was blind, uh, but it's quite difficult with an interactive product. Uh, because they wouldn't be able to see where to click anyway, so the assumption being they might have someone with them to help. But obviously there's still audio in the video so they could follow it. Um, additional methods I could have used, uh, I could have used Encore like I said, uh, HTML5, uh, Fireworks as well for a more visual uh, way of designing it and then uh, adding more complicated behaviours through HTML5 and Game Maker uh, would have been a lot more of a. I could have made more of a, a game that could teach people. Uh, it's got plenty of interactive uh, options on it. Uh, the only problem being that it is for PC, so it wasn't appropriate for cross platforming. Uh, the outcome, I think it's fairly similar to my initial concept. Uh, kind of an issue sometimes I you know I pick I have an idea and I don't want to change it but I wanted to try and go for uh, a simple option that's usable for the user so that they can understand how everything works uh, straight away pick up and uh, not be confused by it at all. Uh, in the future I need to develop more knowledge in Flash if I'm going to do something a bit more complex uh, now that I've proven that I can use it and that, that it works um, I definitely think I'll use it again. Finding more similar products could also help and uh, perhaps making something a 
bit more complex, like having different pages uh, or having more things in it. So, just on time, really. Yeah, just slightly up. Do you feel you could have highlighted the buttons in the room with a bit of colour, or because they were all quite? Yeah, they greyed out. Yeah. Um, I think. When I, I thought about it, obviously you've got the contrast, that one obviously does, it stands up when you roll over it, yeah. but I didn't want to use a bright colour that made it too... Like maybe like a tint or something? Yeah, I mean really, I think that would have been something that I should have, I should have come up with multiple you know, versions of highlights and then given that over to people and to say, you know, which one do you think works best? I mean, like I said, with the with the text, I could have made that roll over, and that would have been a much more. I could have used a, a dark dark brown or something rather than the kind of pale grey that was a bit more subtle. Do you think that you could have adapted or kind of extended, like taken your vid your content further, like um, because of a lot of the you click on something and then you would talk about it. Do you think you could have? I know you did include kind of some kind of like visual aids to what the character was saying, but do you think you could have taken that further? I think um, it would have been nice to have maybe uh, had other things that the user could be doing whilst the video is playing, like maybe there could be something interactive related to it that they could explore, or maybe even something to read on the side. Um, I do think just the video on its own, I could have added you know, some a um, bit more of a variety in the content. How about this, the kind of interface is quite flat. Um, do you think you could make it three D? Maybe was that a picture that you took yourself on the TV? That was a picture I took myself and then thresholded and yeah. edited. Uh, I had one of my initial ideas was to have a television on. You know, in like a, a very old, uh, like eighties style, you know, the the recognisable kind of striped wallpaper or something, <laughs> um, and have a, just a TV on, you know, on the TV stand. Um, I think that would have maybe looked a bit more three um, D, and then I could have maybe added other objects in. But I wanted to go for something that looked a bit more uh, painted. Or if you had like the video of like someone actually like actually pulling down, oh, okay. cool. yeah, yeah, because like, to highlight, oh, you can actually pull it down or twist it to actually show the audience. Maybe I don't know. It would be quite cool. Do you think there was anything you could have done to attract people towards the computer in the museum? Because uh, your main interface was. Yeah. I, I think everyone had the same idea, but the main interface was quite. Static, sort of I think towards it. if I had that uh, restart back to home, that having that static on the screen would be well, it would contribute to catching people's eyes, you know, out of the corner of their eye and see something moving. Uh, although that, that doesn't necessarily make any sense, you could see it and say, Oh, that's a TV and that's moving, so it's obviously there's something there that's interactive, and then they may approach that. Um, and that's something that I, you know, I could have fixed fairly quickly. So I guess more alterations and made it like that. Do you think you could have uh, maybe related the content a bit more to them, like the objects and you've had? Like it seems similar to mine in that it's quite universal. Yeah. Um, I remember when we had the discussion with Anushka about getting access to the objects and things like that. She'd also uh, mentioned that we might be able to get some more information. I had asked, you know, if I could maybe get uh, uh, more like some written history of the objects and things like that. And I think uh, with that stuff not being accessible, that's when I thought to myself, well, I want to go for something a bit broader, a bit more open to interpretation, which is something that they wanted. But I wasn't very confident with. Um, Kind of like historical information in there, um, but you know, if I maybe just 
visited a few more times and just taking notes from what they said, I think I could have included some. I really like the the ideas of the, the presenter and how you've kind of contextualized that as something that we're used to. Um, and I think any kind of audience would go, yeah, I, I, I can relate to this. I can see the humor in it, so that's great. Um, I might have like looked a little bit further and there's people that use that kind of technique. Um, I don't know if you've seen um, Bob Dylan's famous song where he holds up the words to the song, oh. and that's the, that's the video. Or um, Julian Wearing does the same kind of thing. She holds notices um, that expresses the person's inner like feelings. So there's, a, there's like potentially, it's not really a question, but there's potentially like further extensions to that yeah. presenting thing that I think would have been really interesting to, to, to explore. Maybe in each different video, and I think I'm alluding to what Simon was saying. Okay, yeah. mm. I've got one question. Would there be issue, you were talking about cross-platform, so let's say you've got your thing working on a Samsung, there are other brands, uh, device, uh, tablet. Is there, like, that's only 10 inches, I think, theirs is? Yeah, you'd have to make a smaller resolution. Well, oh, there are some, uh, the, oh, there's only ones that go up to like 720p now on there. I think cool. the resolution would be fine. I'm just thinking about the composition that you have on the page. You can't see it there. Um, I think in terms of... If you look at like still, apps um, that, that are available, I mean, the buttons kind of take up, I mean, the space is a premium on yeah. smartphones and tablets. It is absolutely premium. Yeah. iMac's not. So while there is consideration of those things, if you put that, your video is going to be absolutely tiny. Yeah. That's a good point. And so we did, there was like some consideration. Um, I mean, Knowing that, thinking about that, what, what would be a, a move? I think if I was to put it on uh, something smaller like an Android phone, I might have, when you say you uh, pull one of the levers or something, have like a, a zoom into the TV set and you can maybe just see the edge of the frame or something and then zoom back out again when mm -hmm. finish. Maybe that was a slightly missed opportunity. Yeah. Overall. Yeah, because then you would have had a lot bigger video. Mm. Um, I have one other question, but maybe it's, it's more difficult to answer. Uh, and this, I guess, goes for, for everybody. But there's um, something in interactive products called lifespan. Yep. And it's not something that we've really discussed that much because we were so focused on production. Um, do you think your product has a lifespan in terms of, right, the person, the visitor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think I tried to uh, extend it slightly by having a comic element in some of my videos in the way that I wanted either people to come back at it and, you know, remember that funny Bit when it made me first surprise in the first moment that some confetti mm -hmm. just flew past me when I was talking mm -hmm. about joy. Um, and also the fact that that would then encourage users to maybe bring someone else because they, you know, they thought it was funny and they want to see the look on their face mm -hmm. uh, when they use it. Other than that, I think it, there's not much I think I could have done more. Perhaps the, the random generator thing yeah. is something that, you know, you've already alluded to it, and I think that would be a big part of the the opportunity to extend the life of that. Mm. Um, is there a confusion between the text and the buttons then? Uh, there was, uh, during the private viewing, someone was trying to click the text. Why, um, why is that? Why do people want to click the text? Because it's a label. And right. uh, behind the text, I've I've 
uh, I've done like a little paint stroke behind it to highlight it. The idea being to make it more eligible, uh, eligible, um, legible, legible. <laughs> Thank you. Um, to make it more legible for users, so that uh, mm -hmm. they see it and then they can follow that kind of label to the button. Is it because buttons conventionally have text on? Yeah, probably. In, in some many products. Yeah. And the products that people access the screen. most are probably web-based, and those are very heavily work navigation systems, aren't they? Mm. So I think that's something to definitely work on. No, 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 really good. Thank you very much.